fortune. I could, of course, argue about being fortunate in the sense of having a family, having nothing to want, having my basic needs being taken care of. But fortune, of course, can also exist in many other ways. For example, here on YouTube, fortune is having people like Jack, who on a single YouTube channel manage to put together everything that we can validly argue against in theism. People like Jack create videos in which each individual video is a perfect example of the form of fallacious reasoning that leads people to believing in all sorts of spurious nonsense. And it is easy to make videos addressing the sort of things that somebody like Jack says. Another person who is a good example of this is my good friend Sami Zatari, who does a similar thing. He makes several videos addressing atheism as if, as if it is something that needs to be addressed and his arguments are equally transparently fallacious. There are obviously also differences between the two. Sami Zatari, for example, is in my opinion quite a decent, nice guy. Jack, not so much. Anyway, let's just have a quick look at the latest video that Jack inflicted on us. And let's see what he's doing in that video. In his latest video, for example, Jack argued that atheists cannot really say that they lack a belief in a god. Or, more specifically, that they lack a belief either way regarding the existence of God, if they then start making arguments about, well, if your God is so good, then why does he do this, that or the other? For example, that might at first sound like a plausible argument, but in actual fact, what Jack shows here is that either he is completely ignorant, or he is pretending to be completely ignorant of a very simple and well-known logical construct a logical form of argument that is known as reductio ad absurdum. This is the formal representation of that argument. And what it boils down to is this. If premise P over here, or rather over there, doesn't matter. If premise P leads you to a an absurdity, which in logical terms is represented with the term false, then we must conclude that therefore not P. That the original premise must therefore be incorrect. Now in real lines of reasoning, obviously, it's not always as simple as that. You don't always have just a simple premise P that leads to a clear absurdity and we can therefore clearly conclude that P is not true. But look at the sort of arguments that theists do seem to present about their gods, that theists do seem to be saying about their gods. For example, I think that in many Christian denominations it's common to say that God is omniscient and omnipotent. Now if that is the premise, there is a God and that God is omniscient and omnipotent, then we can easily, through simple logic, show how that leads to a contradiction. And therefore, the premise must be false. That therefore means that there is not a God that is omniscient and omnipotent. But, in actual fact, that's not a single premise. There are a number of different premises there. First of all, the premise that there is a God, whatever the hell that is. Then, that that entity is omniscient, that that entity is omnipotent. There are a number of different premises inherent in that statement and any of those premises could be false, including the very first one, there is a God. 
So that is what Jack doesn't understand. Jack does not understand that it is perfectly valid to argue on the basis of a reductio ad absurdum. And during the argument, therefore, you take the position that a certain premise is true. Let's assume that there is a God that is omniscient and omnipotent, then we have to reach these conclusions and therefore that leads to an absurdity and therefore the original premise is incorrect. During the argument it is perfectly valid to make to work on the basis that God does exist but if that leads to a contradiction then we need to revisit the premise and that is what Jack that is where the big big problem lies when it comes to Jack. That is what Jack does not want us to do. He does not want us to reach conclusions that are fallacious, in other words does not want us to reach the conclusion that we have reached an absurdity and then go back to the premises because that means he has to overthrow his worldview, his basic set of axioms, so to speak, speak. But we must, because it has led to a clear absurdity. And this is what you must insist on when you're arguing with somebody like Jack. You must insist as soon as you reach a contradiction, as soon as you reach the statement, this is absurd, you must insist on going back to the premises. And you must insist that the person who puts the premises in place in the first place, i.e. Jack in this case, that they must review their premises and they must give you a new set of premises in which at least one of the original premises has been replaced by its opposite. And then we can take it from there. Jack doesn't want us to do that. Jack wants us to continue arguing from his original premises. There is, for example, a omnipotent and omniscient God. And that God is right and just and merciful and whatever. That leads me to another simple logical construct of argument. And that's this one. False implies P. What that means in simple English is that in a logical reasoning, in a logical argument, once you're in la-la land, you stay in la-la land. Once you've reached a conclusion that's internally inconsistent, contradictory in nature, then, as far as logic goes, anything goes and anything you say is equally valid within the context of false any premise p is by definition valid and that is where jack wants to be that is where jack likes to be that is where jack feels comfortable because he is living within a state of contradiction he is living in la la land and therefore we cannot validly we cannot consistently, we cannot convincingly argue against any conclusions that Jack sees fit to reach. Because he is in La La Land and therefore he knows that anything he likes to, he chooses to and he wants to conclude about his imaginary friend is something that we cannot contradict as long as we agree to work within the premises that Jack set on the outset. I don't want to argue, I don't want to reason with him on that basis, because it's absurd. The whole worldview that Jack espouses is absurd, and his whole intellectual construct of God and whatever else he believes in is equally absurd. And he might like to live in La La Land, but I am certainly not going to follow him there.